Version 5, Baselight for Avid, adds dozens of new features, as well as providing support for end-to-end -end color workflows with other Baselight and Daylight products running Version 5 software. In these videos, I will look at some of the new features and explain the other improvements and enhancements we've made in this exciting update to this incredible plugin. So let's get started. Previous versions of Baselight for Avid provided the familiar Baselight user interface in a large pop-up window which could be scaled to fill the screen. The panels within the UI could be resized as on the full Baselight systems, but there was no way to rearrange them or hide tools which you didn't want to use. Version 5 adds the ability to customize the user interface using workspaces. We've included two preset workspaces, Classic, which provides the same UI layout as the version 4.4 plugin, and Standard. This gives you a useful combination of tools and controls arranged as a collection of docked views. As before, the views can be resized by dragging on the splitter bars between them, but now they can also be rearranged by holding down the control key and then dragging the window with the left mouse button. When you release the mouse button, the view will drop into its new place within the UI. Individual views can also be hidden, either by holding down the control key and then right-clicking on the view and selecting Hide from the pop-up menu, or by deselecting the view in the Views menu. Additional views can be added to the UI either by enabling them in the Views menu or right-clicking while holding the control key and then selecting Insert from the pop-up menu. You can now save the entire user interface as a workspace by selecting Manage Workspaces from the Views menu. This allows you to set up several different workspaces which can then be quickly selected using the keyboard shortcuts listed in the Views menu. Another useful enhancement we've added is Gestural Numeric Entry. If you want to enter a value into a numeric field, you can now click and drag within the field using the mouse. Rather than dragging up or down, you move the mouse in circles as if adjusting a rotary control, clockwise to increase the value and anti-clockwise to decrease it. Using circular gestures means that you won't run out of drag range, as you might if the mouse had to be moved horizontally or vertically to change the value. This is similar to the existing gestural editing mode in the image display. The new gestural controls are also geared, which means slower rotations give you finer control. The gearing sensitivity can be adjusted in the preferences. We've also added some extra views to version 5. There's now a second vector scope. This is very handy, as you can increase the gain of the second scope, allowing you to keep a close eye on the white point while adjusting the colour overall. We've also added a metadata view, which shows metadata for the current clip. By default, only fields which contain values are shown. However, you can view all the metadata fields by clicking on the Show All button. These are all the columns available in the current Avid bin. If you're familiar with Baselight for Avid version 4.4, then you'll probably have noticed a few extra bits and pieces in the user interface. For example, this view here. This is the layer view, and as its name implies, it shows you the different layers which make up the grade stack for the current shot. Clicking on a layer will select the controls for that layer. The layer numbers correspond to the numbers in the layer manager. If you hover over a layer with the mouse, the layer name will appear at the top of the thumbnail. If you move the mouse pointer towards the top of the layer, you'll see a yellow line appear on the thumbnail. This is a scrub bar, and if you click and drag on it, you can scrub through the shot. Notice that as I do this, the image view shows the output of this layer, rather than the bottom layer of the stack. This is a useful way of previewing the output of a specific layer, without having to switch the image viewer over to Layer Output. If the layer has a mat, this is also shown as a small inset thumbnail within the main layer thumbnail. If I click on the mat thumbnail, the mat controls appear in the parameters view. 
And again, if I click and drag along the top of the mat thumbnail, I can view the mat and scrub through it. This tiny little thumbnail is a little hard to see, so we've added an alternative view which shows the layer and its mat side by side. This view is toggled using the Show Mat button at the bottom of the Layers view. As well as providing a quick way to select a layer within the current grade stack, the Layer view also allows you to reorder the layers simply by clicking and dragging them up and down the stack. Another really cool new feature is the Shot Bar. This is part of the Play Controls view. These are a new set of controls which help navigate more smoothly between the clips on your timeline. Even though Baselight for Avid is a shot-based plugin, you've always had the ability to jump directly between graded shots without having to leave the plugin using the F5 and F6 shortcut keys. The shot bar provides a visual reference of all the shots in the sequence and allows you to quickly jump to any frame by clicking with the mouse. You can even drag the Baselight cursor seamlessly through the shots. Now remember that these are only the shots which include the Baselight plugin. Any shots which don't have the effect won't appear in the shots bar and will simply be skipped as you drag the cursor along. You'll notice that there's also a timecode display above the shot bar. This can be toggled to show either the source timecode of the current clip or the absolute time from the start of the Avid sequence. The transport buttons below the shot bar provide controls for play and stop, jump to the start and end of the current shot, jump to the next or the previous shot, and also jump to the next or previous shot which matches the navigate filter. The navigate filter can be set to different metadata within the clip. For example, if I set it to tape, then it will display the tape name for the current clip and will allow me to jump directly to other clips which have the same tape name. If there are no further clips which match the filter, a message appears at the top of the UI. We've also added new keyboard shortcuts for all these buttons. By the way, the poster frame is the one which appears in the thumbnails. You can change it by parking on the frame you want to use and then pressing P while holding the control key or the command key on a Mac. Now that we have the shot bar, this gives us easy and quick access to all the other baselight graded clips in the timeline. This makes it much easier to copy the grade from one clip and apply it to another one. To further speed up the workflow, we've added several new copy and paste modes. These can all be accessed from the Edit menu, as well as via keyboard shortcuts or buttons on the Slate control panel. As well as being able to copy and paste the parameters for an individual operator, you can now copy and paste all the operators in a layer, and even the entire grade stack for a shot. I'll copy the entire stack from this shot as an example. And as I'm working on a Mac, I'm using the keyboard shortcut Command U. Once you've copied the source layer or stack into the buffer, you can then apply it in several different ways to the destination shot or shots. These options are selected in the new Apply Options submenu in the Edit menu. Note that you can also access the menu by clicking on this button below the shot bar. First, you can choose whether you want to replace the current layer with the layer or layers you've copied, or add them below the current layer. The third option is to merge the copied layer or layers with the whole of the existing stack on the destination shot. In this case, any layers in the destination which have the same layer number as the layers copied from the source will be overwritten, but other layers will remain as they are. If you choose to merge the layers, then you also have the option to protect existing layers in the destination. In that case, they won't be replaced, even if there are layers with the same number in the source you are copying from. The final setting here allows you to also replace the input layer with the settings from the source shot. This includes settings such as the input colour space and the overall stack settings. Once you've set the Apply options, you then have the choice of pasting to the current shot by selecting Apply from the Edit menu 
or you can also press the apostrophe key on the keyboard. Or alternatively, you can apply the pasted layer or layers to one or more other shots in the timeline by selecting Apply to Other. The actual shots which the paste operation will be applied to are determined by the rest of the settings in this menu. You can either choose All Shots or Shots which match one of the following criteria. Finally, you can specify whether the pasted layers should only be applied to shots after the current shot, before the current shot, or to either side of the current shot. Note that none of these options includes the current shot. If you want to paste to the current shot, you need to select the Apply option, not Apply to Other. This is to avoid accidentally adding layers you may have just copied from this shot back onto the same shot. These powerful new copy and paste options can help you quickly grade multiple shots which all need the same look applied, such as shots which all come from the same master clip or camera setup. For example, using the Replace Forwards Apply mode, you can work through a sequence from the beginning, grading the first instance of each specific shot in a scene, and then applying it in one go to all similar shots further on in the scene. As you work through the sequence, you will find that an increasing number of the shots will already have a grade applied via the Apply to Other paste operation. As these are all similar shots, they may only need a slight subsequent adjustment to their grade. This can really speed up the process of grading an entire timeline. One of the great features in Baselight is the scratch pad, a set of memories which allows you to store several different looks or versions of a look and then apply any of them instantly to the current shot. The scratch pad is also available in Baselight for Avid. It works best when used with the numeric keypad, and we've added a new scratchpad menu to make it easy to enable that option. In the previous version of Baselight for Avid, there were a total of 18 memory slots spread across two pages. The nine slots on page one can be used to quickly grab the current grade stack as a new version into each slot in turn by pressing the Enter key on the numeric keypad. This version has now been added to the scratch pad. In Baselight for Avid version 5, we've expanded the total number of memories to 81, arranged into 9 pages of 9 slots. Not only does this allow you to store many more looks, but they are now remembered even when you quit Avid. Internally, they are stored as BLG files, which means that an image is also captured when you grab a look. In the previous version, the scratchpad only stored the grade information, so the image you saw was always the current image at the cursor. However, it's now possible to make use of the stored images by selecting Display Grabbed Image from the scratchpad menu. Now the scratchpad can also be used as a still store. This means you can also use it for match grading between two different shots. For example, if I want to match this shot to this one, I can grab the first shot into an empty slot in the scratch pad. I'll use page 9 and I'll grab it into the first slot by pressing and holding the number 1 key on the numeric keypad. Now I can enable the compare mode. If I now step forward to the shot I want to grade, I can see it next to the first shot for comparison. It's also possible to use a wipe between the shots. In this mode, you can pan and zoom both images to get them into the best position for doing a match grade. I can now grade this shot to get it to match the previous shot. OK, that looks about right. I can now move on to other shots which need to be graded to match the first shot. If you use Avid with a client monitor, then this next feature will be of interest to you. One of the issues when using client monitoring with plugins is that while the plugin interface is open, frames have to be simultaneously read into the plugin from the Avid timeline 
while at the same time the processed files are being sent back out to be displayed on the client monitor. This bottleneck means that playback from the Baselight UI is typically slower than real time when using the always update setting for the client monitor. To get around this problem, all the frames for the current clip are read into an input cache, so they can then be played back and processed directly from memory without incoming frames getting in the way. By default, the cache is set to use 256 megabytes of system RAM, which is enough to hold about 8 to 10 seconds of HD at the medium video quality setting. But that size can be increased if you have longer clips or are working at a higher resolution. The settings are accessed here. Note that we've also moved the other client monitoring controls into this menu too. The colour of this little play icon indicates the status of the cache. Grey means that nothing has been cached yet. Orange means that the clip is partially cached. And green means that the entire clip is cached. The number of cached frames is shown here. If the cache isn't big enough to hold all the frames for the current clip, then the icon will turn red. Once the clip is fully cached, playback should be much smoother, as the frames are only being sent back to Avid and not being read into the plugin at the same time. If you change any of these settings or move to another shot, then the cache will be reset.